Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you are in good shape and very enthusiastic to learn something new. So guys, this video is going to help you in learning something new and using that knowledge to achieve your dreams. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of the mobile application of ours. So on this mobile application, you would get one feature that you won't find on any other platform or app, I should say, that is very difficult to reach and that is the past years. So yes, guys, you get the past years, you get the live video sessions, you get top of strategies and everything on a mobile application, which you can download from the Google store. And these are the various channels through which you can reach out to us. And remember guys, this is our WhatsApp number as well. So in case you feel the need of giving us any kind of feedback, be it the positive or the negative feedback, you are welcome to give us the feedback on this now. Okay. So let's begin today's class. So the very first question that we have is in October 2020, history of culture has launched the Har Ghar Dhyan campaign in collaboration with the Art of Living Organization to spread awareness about mental health. The ministry wrote the University Grants Commission and the school board CBSE to participate in the campaign. Mental health is an emerging pandemic which needs to be dealt with most sincerity. According to the National Mental Health Survey of 2015 to 16, there are dash million people suffering from the mental illness. So, what is the right answer? The right answer is 150 million. So, dead crore log hai is desh mein jo ki mental illnesses se sapa kar hai. And believe me guys, just I am going to take one minute or so to discuss about it and then I will move to the topic itself. So, I was talking about the mental health and in our today's society as well, we consider consulting a psychiatrist is a serious mental issue. Whereas, it is not so. So, we should take a take an active call if we are feeling that we have this problem of mental illness or somewhere in our surroundings is struggling with the problem of mental illness like depression, anxiety, all of these are some of the examples of mental, mental illnesses. Although illness would be a rather serious term, I would say, I would say rather the disturbances. But still, yes, your body is sick, your mind is sick. So, monkey, uh, ko karne ke liye, why not we consult the doctor? Okay, so that is something that I wanted to share because nowadays we are struggling a lot with our dreams, with our aspirations, as well as the cutthroat competition. And it is very natural for all of us to feel stress, anxiety, and everything, right? But we need to put a stop to ourselves when that anxiety crosses a bar. Positive stress is very good for us to achieve something in our life. But if that stress is taking a call on your body, if that stress is taking a to toll on your mental health, then you should put a stop to your stress and identify. And a very basic means to identify the level of stress or uh, the anxiety that you are feeling or the cause of anxiety, you can sit with yourself. Try to sit with yourself. Try to journal uh, whatever your thoughts are and believe me these things will definitely help you cope with the mental distress because I know that you are aspirants and aspirants ko bohut zyada stress hai aaj ke time pe kyunki na sirf kuch karne ka junoon dikh hai aap logo ko but yes you have the cutthroat competition out there as well so competitiveness is also one of the reasons for which you might feel stress so as I told you sit with yourself write down your points in your journal or talk Talk to anybody, be it your friend, lover or family, just talk because talk is a most uh, reliable therapy as far as the mental distress is concerned. Chale. Now let's move back to the topic itself. So the Ministry of Culture had in October 2022 launched this Har Ghar Dhyan campaign. You are remembering the Har Ghar Jal campaign? Yes, on the Har Ghar Jal campaign from the same line or same line of people's participation, we have launched this Har Ghar Dhan campaign. But 
There must be a question in your mind that this campaign was launched in October 2022. Then why are we discussing it here in January 2023? So guys, remember this point that whenever the government launches any campaign or any new initiative, then it is a static current affair. Okay, current we have but static we have because you never know whenever the examiner will ask you this question. You can expect a question out of this campaign a year after all three. Okay. So all the initiatives, especially the major initiatives, which come in the news again and again are important. Now, it was launched in collaboration with the Art of Living organization. Okay, and the basic idea is to spread awareness about, among the youth about the mental health. Because nowadays, youth is the one which is struggling a lot with the mental issues. And in that too, we will find that the people who have, uh, who relatively at a higher level. They have privileges of house, income, and distressed in comparison to the people who have nothing. Right? So that is also a dilemma that we all are facing. Now, in order to spread awareness on the youth about the mental health, UGC and CBSE, both of them have been roped in by the Ministry of Culture in this cabin so that the youngsters, the students can also come across the mental health and how can they keep up their mental health. Now the meditators or the coaches from the Art of Living organization will be appointed by the Ministry of Culture for this campaign. Second thing is this Art of Living is a Bangalore based organization. It has spread its way across the globe but the headquarters of this organization is located in Bangalore. So that is another fact that all of you should remember. Okay, and the campaign will be completed on Independence Day of 2023. Okay, so that is all. Apart from this, nothing much is there. Uh, we have discussed this as well. And we have also discussed the relevance of this campaign. Because according to the National Mental Health Survey of 2015 to 16, we had 150 million people suffering from the mental illness. Okay, and this is the data of 5 to 6 years prior to this time period, okay? We don't know how much this number has increased, especially because of the lockdowns and the pandemic. We don't know what that uh, has, the, has has an impact on the people's mind, okay? So we need to look out for that as well. Okay, so the next question that we have is, <laughs> United Kingdom will be the partner country for the Lamarck's flagship Pharma Biotech event named Biofisha 2023. Shaping the next generation, advancing for one is the theme of the event. What does N stand for in one? So guys, one itself has a full form, okay? So N stands for next generation. One stands, uh, in one, O stands for one health, E stands for equity, and N stands for next generation. You must have heard about this One Health many times. But what does the meaning of it? What is the meaning of this One Health? The meaning of this One Health is that we take the collaborative efforts or we make the policies which have the human health, the animal health, and the environment's health in its center. Okay? So we make policies which caters to the health of all these three, uh, we can say spheres or all these three stakeholders, okay? So that is the meaning of One Health. And we have heard about this One Health, One World initiative given by the Prime Minister many a times, okay? So do remember the meaning of this One, one Health is this. And obviously the next generation, which is going to be the IT or AI generation, how can we reap or leverage that generation to achieve the goal of One Health and that goal should be equitable in nature, okay? So it should not happen that some part of the human race are getting benefited out of this uh, next generation and this policy making. So in order to uh, curb the inequity in the distribution of benefits, we are going to focus on the equity principle in this bioasia. Okay. However, this bioasia is going to be restricted to the pharma industry only, pharma and biotech industry. And 
this meaning which I have just told you that is the meaning of the general one hand, okay, which is the motto given by the Prime Minister. So that's the general meaning of one hand. As far as this Bio Asia event is concerned, so it is specifically related to the pharma industry. So it provides a platform to the stakeholders so that they come together and they discuss about the new events and the new innovations in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology. Okay. Now Telangana organizes this event every year. United Kingdom has been chosen as the partner country for this year's event, okay? And shaping the next generation, advancing for one is the theme. So this is all for this question. Justice G. Rohini led commission for the subcategorization of other backward classes has now been given the 40th extension, uh, extension in its tenure by the president and of which article was the commission created. So it's a very basic and obvious question that you can expect out of this news. So the right answer here is article 3. Okay, so the news is that the Justice G. Rohini Commission, which was formed in the year 2017, this commission has been given extension in its tenure. So it is going to work for a, a longer period of time now. And this is guys the 14th time for which the extension has been given to this commission. Okay. So the basic purpose of this commission is to create these subcategories within the OBC category. Now what is the use of creating subcategories? We already have OBC category. We already have SCs and ST category. Now why are we creating these subcategories? The reason is that there are certain categories in the OBC category which have advanced because of this quota but there are certain categories which have been uh, which have not uh, been able to take the advantage of it okay which categories are such that they are very far behind and which categories are such that those who have taken the benefit of this they were able to uplift their social and economic status so now what is the status the status quo is that the government wants to uplift these people as well who were not able to take the benefit of the quota, okay, because we know that the quota is 27% for the OBCs and we do not have any subcategorization. So, suppose that this is one task, this is another task, and this is another task. Now, we all know that we do not fo uh, follow this lean pattern of caste, we have caste within caste, okay. So, that is the stigma that Indian society has. So, within OBC, we have these three castes, let's say. And C is relatively poor and disadvantaged than B and B is relatively disadvantaged than A. Now what is happening? Because they were advantaged, they were able to take the benefit of this quota. But the C which was very disadvantaged, it was not able to take the benefit of this 27% quota because quota to fix it, seats we fix it. Okay, if we have only 100 seats in RBI grade B and out of those 100 seats, 27 seats are reserved for the OBCs, then we are not going to look out for the each and every cast within OBC. We will definitely look out for the people who are clearing the examination and coming out to us and asking us for the job on the basis of OBC category. Okay, now what they have to do, they are relatively advantaged, they will definitely crack the examination. And they will go and take for the job and this will create a loop because then their children will be able to take the job and this 27 percent will never be able to percolate to this section. And precisely because of that, the is needed. And in my opinion, the creamy layer in the ST and ST is also needed if we want to give the benefit to the lesser and the bottom rock people who are at the bottom. Okay, I hope that this much is clear. So that is the need of the subcategorization. Now let's discuss why is the delay in this committee's work. The delay is because of the data. We have many OBCs and many castes in India and the data collection was not in the hands of the sufficient time. Now the data collection activity has been handed over to this commission but still data collection requires a lot of time and effort and that is why this commission has been given the extension year by year and this is the 14th extension which it has. Now remember 
that this commission was formed in 2017, Article 340. Okay, these are two facts related to this commission that you should remember. And chairperson remains the same because after this person, the entire commission is known. Okay, so that is all. Now let's move to knowledge nuggets. Because in the knowledge nuggets, I'm definitely going to give you something very crucial and important. Okay, so reservation percentage according to the percentage or according to the Department of Personnel and Training, we have certain percentages. 15% reserved for the STs, 7.5% for the XTs, and 27% for the OBCs in the recruitment in jobs as well as admission in colleges. Okay, if that recruitment is done on an on India all India basis. In the competitive exams, for example, RBI ka exam hai, SEBI hai, and whatever examination is there. So, if we have 100 seats, then 15 seats would be reserved for the STs, 7.5 seats would be reserved for the STs, and 27 seats would be reserved for the OBC. And this entire criteria sums up to 49.5%, sorry, 49.5 seats or 49.5% of the total seats. So guys, there is a very landmark judgment that is Indra Swane and others versus Union of India case of 1992 under which the Supreme Court ruled out that the reservation should not be above 50%. It should be limited to 15%. But you can clearly see that the reservation of only these three categories is 49.5% and we now have PWS category as well. Okay? So it has been given the 10% quota. So definitely, we have 59.5% reservation, which is now being given, which is in violation to the Supreme Court's judgment. However, it is not against the Constitution. Now, this is a very UPSC kind of a topic, and I uh, am not deliberately willing to discuss this here because this is a platform for the banking examination, and I believe that would complex the things more. And more. So let's stick. So stick to what we have been given here in this slide. So I hope that you have understood the criteria for the reservation. Other thing is that women, minorities, persons with disabilities, servicemen, all of these are also given the quotas. But their quotas are horizontal in nature and not vertical. Okay. So that is another thing related to the quotas or the reservation that you should be aware of. In the vertical uh, reservation, what do we do? We create a like SC, SC, OBC, PWS. These are the separate categories. But in the horizontal, what we do, we create the, we reserve the seats for the disadvantaged sections within these communities, okay, and we do not create a separate category for that. For example, if women, women belong to the SCs, they would be given better uh, advantages than the women of the general category, okay. This is a very good example of RBI notification. In RBI, we have the PWDs of, OB, uh, of the SPs category to get 15 years relaxation in age. We have the PWDs of ST who get the same relaxation, and we have the PWDs of the OBC who get the 15 years of age relaxation, and we have the PWDs of the gender who get 10 years relaxation. Okay, so what is this? This is an example of the uh, reservation and not vertical reservation because then here we are not creating any new category altogether which is getting the reservation rather the people who are from these categories only who are more disadvantaged than the people of this category than the other people of this category okay so i hope you are understanding the basic idea of it and the basic idea is to uplift the disadvantaged people so we have divided these categories on the basis of social and economic disadvantage and on the basis of the disadvantages that these people are facing within these categories we have created these separate categories for reservation purpose okay so that's the basic difference so the difference in vertical and horizontal reservation is of the objective the objective was to uplift the people of different categories and in horizontal reservation we uplift the people within the same category Okay, so that's basic distinction. Now the next thing is, which is a very important thing for the aspirant because aspirants ask this question many a time. Ki hamara OBC ka certificate 
एक का है वेदर इट विल बी अप्लाइड और एग्जामिनेशन और नॉट ये क्वेश्चन तो आपके दिमाग में आता ही होगा सो आई एम गोइंग टू आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन हियर सो रिमेंबर ओबीसी लिस्ट इज प्रिपेयर्ड बाय द सेंटर एंड स्टेट ओके इन द स्टेट सर्विसेज द ओबीसी सर्टिफिकेट गिवन इन द स्टेट इज एप्लीकेबल बट इन द सेंटर सर्विसेज योर कास्ट शुड बी इन द सेंट्रल लिस्ट ऑफ द ओबीसीज इफ योर कास्ट सपोज आई एम गुप्ता ठीक है आई एम अ बेसिक जनरल हिंदू पर्सन If I go to Nagaland, maybe I would be a minority there. Okay, let's suppose caste wise लेते हैं, so I would be a lower caste, uh, an ST in Nagaland. But I okay, so suppose the government of Nagaland give the SC certificate, but can I take that certificate? Not ST, sorry, OBC certificate. SC certificate दे नहीं सकती सरकार. It's the OBC certificate which the Nagaland government has issued to me. Now suppose if that OBC certificate I use to for the RBI examination. So should I be given that advantage? Obviously not. I would not be given that advantage. But in case there is a state service of Nagaland certification, definitely I would get a job on the basis of reservation quota on the reserved seat of mine. Okay. So that's the decision. So set OBC list is prepared by center and state. And remember, if you are applying for any central job. Central government job like RBI, SBI, NABAR, any other central government job, then you should have the centrally issued OBC certificate. State certificate नहीं चलेगा until or unless your caste is in the central list of OBCs. As far as the SCs and SBs are concerned, so their list is prepared by the center. The center ही prepare करता है the caste list of uh, the SBs and SCs. Therefore, you must have come across certain laws which tend to include certain tribes from different states within the national tribal list. Okay, so that's the distinction. So I hope your doubt is clear now, and we won't ask this question again. Coming to the Indraswani and the Social Union of India case of 1992, so it gave the 50% limit. So guys, we have a very complex structure of reservation, but do remember whenever are being asked. On reservation, so do remember the basic idea of reservation was to give representation to the disadvantaged people. And right now, even after seventy-five years of independence, we have not reached the stage where we can say that we have removed the caste-based discrimination, and now the reservation should be removed. No, reservation should not be removed at this stage. Maybe twenty-five to thirty years down the line, we may be able to re uh, remove the caste-based. Based discrimination and the reservation, but right now we are not in a position. So don't get on the extremes. Think rationally. Okay, whenever you are being asked on the topic of reservation, because this is a very sensitive issue. Generally, people they tend to get against this topic, and the people who belong to certain reservations they tend to go to the favoured side. Okay, try to think rationally. Okay, so question number four is which state declared twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three as the year of enterprises? So here, here are the guidelines. So before moving with the news, let me tell you that Telangana had or declared twenty twenty as the year of AI to boost the AI startups in the state. And this state, Kerala, has organized or declared twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three as the year of enterprises to boost the enterprises. Apart from this, the Kerala government has also organized an enterprise campaign. Okay, and the tagline of this campaign is "My Enterprise is Nation Pride." Okay, uh, this year is the year of enterprise. The Arunachal district of Kerala has registered more than thousand new MSMEs, and this is definitely going to be a boost for the Indian industry. Next question is. Recently, the International Monetary Fund has provided 4.7 billion US dollars loan to Bangladesh government to tackle the macroeconomic issues. Of this, dollar 3.3 billion is given under the Extended Credit Facility of IMF, and dollar 1.4 billion is given under the Resilience and Sustainability Facility for Climate Investments. For the first time since when was the 
plus the end transaction and related person pay for the private investments created. So, guys, it was created in the year 2022. Now, here before beginning with the news, let me tell you that whenever IMF, World Bank, or any other important organization gives loans to the other nations. We do not have to mug up the details about it, but in case if these nations are of ours, then uh, I would recommend all of you to please look into the news, okay? Because that can be asked in the examination, right? So, uh, IMF has given this much amount of loan to Bangladesh government so that it can deal with its own economic issue. Now, this facility is this much amount is given under the extended credit facility of IMF, which is basically one of the many facilities which IMF uses to give loans. Okay, so there is nothing special in this facility. However, the facility for climate investment is a special one facility. Why? Because it is created in 2022, and Bangladesh was the first country to receive loan out of this facility. And the third reason is that it is created specifically to give loans so that the countries can improve their projects or they can improve and create resilience and sustainability as far as the environment and pandemic are concerned. So, environment sustainability and pandemic preparedness. These are the two axes on which this trust or this fund works. Okay, so that is written here only. Climate change and pandemic situations for the kind of and uh, it is created through this resilience and sustainability trust, which is not a very relevant fact for all of you to remember. Okay, so that was enough for this news. And here, this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the current affairs of today. And in case you have any feedback, you can provide it in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys. Keep preparing, keep working hard because hard work always pays off. Goodbye.